We have received reports from the Outer Rim from Dr. McKay aboard the science vessel Puddle Jumper, my lords. Dr. McKay has identified a planet of interest in the Rotenev system. The doctor reports that the fifth planet in this system is covered in vast structures. This fallen world surely has secrets to be unearthed. The doctor reports massive dilapidated structures cover the entire surface of the world. At one time, the city planet must have been home to billions, but is now deserted. Whoever lived here has long since disappeared, and Dr. McKay is in the process of setting up a dig site to discover more. The doctor and his team have identified an unusual amount of synthetic debris. Although not obviously built to serve as a machine world, it appears that the occupants were mechanical in some form. No agricultural districts have been identified, and within the city blocks there are what seem to be charging habitats, whereby individuals can dock and recharge. It seems apparent that whatever race occupied this city world were originally organic in some manner at least, but as they expanded, they became more and more cybernetic. As we delve deeper, we are finding cybernetic limbs and other various enhancements. It's unclear whether this body modification was state mandated, or if the populace of this world simply became enthralled with the idea of modifying themselves to become more machine than man. After much fruitless searching through the ruins, a number of clues directed our search towards remains of some sort of planetary data processing and storage facility. Once Dr. McKay and his team identified an entrance to the data center, they forced passage through the wreckage. It was a surprisingly easy task to reactivate the facility and interface with the computer systems. Self-repairing circuits and learning algorithms quickly came online to restore limited functionality and communicate with our own computers. The cause for this burst of activity quickly became clear. Rotenav 5 was once the capital of a machine empire known as the Omni. Named for their singular purpose, the Omni were a hybrid of robots and cyborgs who had attempted to assimilate samples of all biological life in the galaxy. It's believed this was in order to prevent their extinction in the face of unknown galactic calamity. It seems that the Omni had been delving deep into the historical records, trying to build a picture of what the galaxy looked like many millennia ago. They used their ability to assimilate other races to acquire more knowledge and more technology to further this pursuit. The galactic calamity that they are concerned about is shrouded in mystery, but according to the records, they believed that every few thousand years their galaxy was wiped clean by an unstoppable force. They cite examples such as interdimensional invaders, or gigantic roaming devouring high fleets, or even cite the possibility of rogue AI nanobots. In any case, the Omni appeared to be preparing for this, although quite how the invasion, assimilation and documentation of the galaxy's organic species would accomplish this is unclear. From the surviving records, we gathered that this course of action was not popular amongst the other galactic powers of their era. For obvious reasons, the organic species occupying the galaxy at the same time as the Omni did not take kindly to members of their species being taken and turned into cyborgs. In a similar manner to that of the fall of the Cybrex, organic life, it seems, sticks together when it really matters, and a mighty campaign to remove the Omni Empire from existence was formed. Multiple species joined this group task force, although whether their motives were solely honourable or if some saw it as simply an opportunity to remove a troublesome neighbour, we don't know. The Omni, however, were extremely mighty, and it would be no easy task to defeat them. They had assimilated an extremely large portion of the galaxy, and had drones from most of the empires facing them. They were well prepared, able to take the best of their technology from the individual races that they had assimilated, and incorporate it into their own ships and planets. Despite the technological power the Omni had, they were fighting on multiple fronts and against overwhelming numbers of enemy ships. They could reinforce their fleet and soldiers during battle through assimilation, but ultimately it would not be enough. Records show that the war was in stalemate, with neither side gaining a sufficient advantage. The Holy Guardian stepped in. Their fleet, equipped with dark matter shields and weaponry, sliced through the Omni battleships, leaving them mostly defenseless for the Organic Federation to clear up any remaining pockets of resistance and begin to purge the Omni Empire through a brutal pattern of orbital bombardment. 
Before their final downfall, the Omni had managed to sample a great deal of races. When it became clear that they were not going to win this war, a great deal of effort was made to develop a device not only to store their great wealth of genetic and cybernetic knowledge, but they wanted to be able to seed life and start again. Effectively, they wanted to create a cloning vat of sorts, that given raw materials could recreate them and any other species that had their pattern uploaded. The device, according to the records, was under development in a biolab situated deep inside a military complex beneath their capital city. We have named the device which we seek the Omnicodex, after its forefathers and an expedition is underway to find the lab containing this device. After significant excavations, the entrance to the biolab has been cleared. Bizarrely, the lab seems to have power as the blast doors remain magnetically sealed. Fortunately, our expedition has a military detachment. Colonel Carter assures me the doors will be open soon enough. Colonel Carter was correct. A tactical shaped proton charge made short work of the blast doors, allowing us to explore inside the lab. The colonel, flanked by airmen, secured the facility without casualty. A few automated defense droids were activated by our intrusion, but they were put down with relative ease by our elite military force. A number of interesting items have been gleaned from this facility, and there is much cause for joy, for we will surely significantly advance our understanding of cybernetics. The way that this race of machines integrated cybernetics and organics with such artistry is fascinating. I sincerely hope this research is not kept locked in a box, for many tragically wounded soldiers could benefit from advanced prosthetic limbs that should become available following this discovery. In any case, the jewel in the Omni Empire, it seems, was this codex. We found it in a shielded room protected by automated laser turrets. It was relatively straightforward to obtain the device from this room. Once activated, we have found that it contains the raw genetic sequence of over 9,000 species. It is remarkable. You can scroll through literal millions of years of evolution in seconds. Furthermore, the device when linked to cloning banks and given the appropriate raw materials can grow us population. The slight snag is that the device does not seem to be finished as the user is unable to select the race that will be made by the device. In all seriousness, it appears that the Omni Empire died to create a genetic vending machine, except all the buttons are randomized. Dr. McKay thinks he is able to fix the device, enabling us to grow specific species. This could become invaluable given the looming food crisis within our borders. The codex contains many entries with the designation of livestock, of both the plantoid and mammalian designations. The device and cloning equipment is being shipped back to Earth should you wish to hit the random button and see what aliens pop out or attempt to fix the device and produce specific livestock. I leave the decision in your hands, my lords. I trust you will choose wisely. Thanks for watching, folks. If you enjoyed this video and want to watch another one, then please click the video on screen now.